So in the points and miles game, we always talk about flexible point earning cards and why they're the best ones to use. This is because of the many airline and hotel transfer partners that you can use to get outsized value on the points that you earn. But one of my favorite credit card creators, Uncle Luke from Luke's Points and Miles, wanted to know if I would give up these flexible point earning credit cards in favor of cash back cards or cash back equivalent cards like the US Bank Altitude Reserve or any hotel credit cards as well. So in this video, I answer this question and explain why I would give up Amex MR points, Chase UR points, and others in favor of a more simplified setup. I want to move on to Uncle Luke's question. So he actually asked a really fun question here, and we did a live, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and it was a really great live. And check it out, definitely you haven't before. But he asked me, Stan, in order to continue using your U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve and other cashback cards, would you forego earning any or all transferable currencies? Excuse me. You would still be eligible to earn airline miles and hotel points in addition to cash back. Note, this means no. Amex MR points, no, Chase UR points. Cash is king, no. So his question is, if you want to use the US Bank Altitude Reserve, you have to get rid of your other flexible point earning cards, but you could use other cashback cards and you could use co-branded airline and hotel credit cards. And I certainly have an answer. But before I give my answer, I want to hear your answer. So why don't we go to the poll here? We're going to go to menti.com. I'm going to move this slide over. The question is, would you give up your credit card transferable currencies in this situation? And so that's the question I want you guys to ask. And so, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, please hit the like button if you're getting value. We'll appreciate that so much. And you, here's the code to join if you'd like. And so we're going to go ahead and start the polling now in three, two, one. So would you give up your transferable currencies if you could only use cash back and you need to use the U.S. Bank Alex Reserve, I'll also join and submit my vote as well. Let's see what we got going on here. Looks like it's about half and half. Looks like people seem to like their transferable currencies more. And so looks like transferable currencies are for the win here because it's now two to one when it comes to the voting that people would not be willing to give up their transferable currencies for cashback cards and co-branded cards. And I think that's certainly very reasonable. It looks like Spencer's saying, nah, give me my UR points. And Yuri actually has another one, that another uh, opinion that says, usually when I have to choose between AR and preferred, I choose AR. And I would have to agree with you, Yuri. I do the same thing myself, having both of those cards as well. Matt Welcher agrees with Spencer, by the way. Good to see you, Matt. Hopefully you're doing well. I haven't talked to you in a little bit, but yes, he is the same as Spencer who would definitely want to have his UR points. So you can see here that most people would not want to give up their transferable currencies for that reason. And I think that's certainly valid and I think that's certainly cool. But what I would say for myself is that, yes, personally, I would give up all transferable currencies for the US Bank Altitude Reserve card and hotel cards. As you know, I don't really do the airline hotel airline credit card thing, but the hotel cards are still cards I use a fair amount, not for purchasing, but mainly for the benefits, which include things like free night awards. US Bank Out Reserve is one of those cards that I use for almost everything. And so it's been a really great card for me. And if I couldn't use that card, I would be very, very sad. The reason why I would say that is, you know, uh, what is my goal for me personally for transferable currencies? I think a lot of us need to ask that question for ourselves. So some of us use Chase URs to, you know, go to Hyatt. Some of us use URs, you know, for international first business class or other transferable currencies. MR, same situation. But for me, I'm looking at the way I use transferable currencies. And for me, it's really to redeem first and business international travel only. I don't use them for any other purpose. I actually store and stockpile them so that when I make that once, hopefully once a year international trip for myself, I'll have enough to, you know, really just be able to get that done. And for me, just the experience from my honeymoon, you know, I know there's save rewards. There's award flights that uh, you can buy for cheaper or get for cheaper if you time it correctly. You know, I'm one of those people that I'd rather spend my time doing something else. And so I know that's not what you want to hear from someone who's redeeming points, but I would much rather redeem my points for a confirmed flight 
than, for example, a Sabre flight with a wait list availability. I know that happens a lot on those Asia flights. And so that's my perspective. I had a chance to spend more points to have a confirmed flight and not to deal with the switching around and trying to figure out like what, you know, wait list, not wait list. I would prefer to go that route myself. And that's the personal preference. Everyone's going to be different about that. And so that's just kind of for me. Also, I can use my Amex MRs for that. Chase URs, my built points, you know, could I redeem your built for Hyatt? I could. I don't really stay at Hyatt because I stay at Marriott's and Hilton and IHG properties at this point. So that's really, you know, what I would do for that. Chad says he's with me on this one. That's good that I'm not the only one that has this idea. Matt Clausen says, but you are can be cash at one cent for point two. You, it can, but the thing is you have to run like a trifecta or you have to run some kind of nonsense thing with a bunch of different cards, whereas I can just do all of my spending on one card and give my wife one card. I'm like, just spend on this card and do this with a mobile wallet. And that's, that's it. It's so simple, right? And be like, no, you got to like activate this Freedom Flex. You got to like do it for these categories for, you know, October to December, then three months, I'll tell you what the next one is. And then like, I got to like use this unlimited card for like this cash back for everything else. And then, you know, you want to use a Chase Sapphire. It's like very confusing. It doesn't seem confusing to a lot of us that are in it. But when you start to involve people that in your family and uh, that are not involved in it, it gets very overwhelming to them and honestly to me too. Um, and so I'd rather choose a simplistic approach versus alternative, knowing that that URs are inherently more valuable than the cashback that's going on. RemGB says, Chase is a glorified cashback setup, especially if you have CSR to book any and every travel you do at 1.5 cents per point. I agree. You're a big fan, RemGB, of the 1.5 cent per point Chase travel portal redemption. And so I think it's a great move. And so that's one of the big keys uh, for that card. And that'll come up into play, by the way, Spencer, in your question, uh, when I answer it and get to that question. And so the next thing is, so for me, first business class, it's nice. But like we said from before, I wouldn't spend 10 grand on it. So I would only be able to access this first business class flight with redemptions. I would never spend money on it. But to me, it is a luxury item. And the reason why I say that is because if those of you who are average builds like myself, like you don't really need that much space, right? You can go to the economy, probably premium economy is, is better idea, but you know, I don't have any like space problems sitting in an economy class seat. Is it kind of fit? Yes, a little fit, but can you handle it for a lot less cash or whatever, I, I would be able to do it, in my opinion, at least for now. I know Uncle Luke has a completely different take on this. And he does never wants to fly long term on a or like a longer flight in economy anymore. I'm kind of the opposite. I, I would have no problem with it. For myself, I consider first business class to be a luxury item. And so if I can afford it with my transferable currencies, then that's perfect. If I can't, then I'm not, and I'm not going to be that sad about it. Yankee Man says, you're not tall. No, I, you know, the thing is... A lot of credit card creators are super tall. You know, like I feel like myself and like Tony and like Calby, like we're not all the same height, but like everybody else is like six foot tall. And so it's insane. And I don't know why <laughs> what that is, uh, but uh, for whatever reason, um, credit card creators tend to be extremely tall, at least six feet. Uh, but I'm unfortunately not a part of that gene pool. So I didn't get that benefit. But in the same rate, it makes it easier for me to fit in economy class. And so I have that on those other taller individuals. Matt Walter says, I'm right on the fringe of having space problems in economy, at least in terms of leg space. Yeah, Matt, I know you're a little bit taller than me. And so I can see where that can be the case. I will say that on most economy class flights, if I sit straight up in my chair and I just like don't uh, put my legs out, I have about six inches of space between my knee and the back of the chair. Now, if the person in front of me leans back, that's a different story. And I always hope that they don't do that, right? But once they do that, I'm not the one that's be like, you know, you can't do that because it's, you know, on them. But I think it's just my opinion, by the way, on that topic is that it's super rude to lean back in your chair. That's just my opinion. I know people have very strong opinions on that. But when you lean back in your chair in front of me, like, I just don't have space anymore. It's like in my face. And then I almost have, I'm forced to lean back my chair to the other person behind me. And it's a whole cascading effect of just impoliteness. So there's that. Spencer's seven foot six. I believe it was six foot seven, but seven foot six is also cool. Daniel is a tall dude. That bro is tall. Also really cool dude, by the way. I met him in New Orleans and I'm sure you all did too. That were there. Great guy, but super tall. Um, I love what Squirrel Messiah says. There's a circle in hell for people who lean their chairs back. I do not. 
uh, like that either. So I'm glad you and I are on the same page, uh, Mr. Squirrel Messiah. All right, CJ Botusa says, short kings. That's right, the you and me. Uh, Nicholas Olivara says, I'm six foot, about 200 pounds with sciatica. Issues to get, try to get business, but for flights about three hours less, I can do economy. Yeah, you know, sometimes when you get older and you have those pain problems, uh, then I can see why having that space is much, much more important. Um, so hopefully you're able to, you know, get that business class seat so you can have a more comfortable experience. Yankee man is six foot three. So leg space and economy is not good. No, it definitely is not good for someone who's six foot three. So uh, it's good to know that you can deal with it to save thousands. Yeah, that's the thing. These these seats are expensive. So really using points is the way to go for that. And so uh, moving on, um, the issue with having transferable currencies is like Uncle Luke says, you have to go to work, right? And so if you look at the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve, if you use the card in a certain way, which is mobile wallets, and if you redeem the card in a, the points in a certain way, which is real-time rewards, you have a easy-to-use system where you're earning 4.5x back on all your purchases. It's very simple. Is it the best? No. Is it really good? Yes. Is it really good for one card? Yes. And so that's why I think about that card. That's very simple. If you use transferable currencies, you earn them, uh, but then you have to figure out how to use them. And the issue is that the these cards tend to have rising annual fees, not to name any issuer in particular. Uh, you're getting more and harder to use statement credits, right? Because that's happening too. And the issue is, and we all talk about this, credit card companies when you pay those annual fees, they already have your money. You have to go to work to get it back. And the level of work you have to do is going to depend on your definition of work because if you are, you know, don't have a lot going on and you have time to have a spreadsheet or whatever organization system you have and you do it and it's fine, it's fine. You know, it's not like a big deal. But I guarantee you three to five years down the line, it's going to start wearing on you and you'll have credit card statement credit burnout like I have the talked about in my videos before. And so that's just a part of the cost you have to pay in time to, and I guess in money too, to use a flexible point currency. And so Ian Mascal says never an issue. I think that's great. We all have our own um, opinions on that. I think that if you can handle it, then that's great. You'll get a lot more value out of the credit cards if you can handle it. But if it's just driving you nuts and you'd rather do something else with your time, then I feel that Simplicity is the way to go. Ian also wants to mention that he always leads his chair back. That's why we have the same chair with the same abilities. It's mind-blowing to me that people think it's rude when flying the early 90s. I feel like that was never an issue. Yeah, so that's fair. I think that if, again, everyone has very strong feelings about the leading the chair back. I personally think it's rude because I would never do it myself. Some people, they always do it, so they think it's normal for them. So whatever, they, whatever someone thinks is normal is going to be what they think is going to be norm. I never do it because I want to respect the person behind me. But then some person like does it in front of me, I'm like, well, they only kind of care about them. I, that's not the way I see it. Uh, I want to care about those around me because I know that we're all kind of small and in a tight space here. But I understand some people have medical issues, some people have space issues. And so it's 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 not a easy to solve situation. It's just important to know where you stand on the issue and go from there. Yuri G says some seats can decline. Uh, I believe those are like the ones, it, it either is the emergency row or the one right in front of the emergency row. I can't remember which one it was, but I wish all seats had that if I'm being totally honest with you. Uh, but well, you know, again, that is something that is a thing to think about. So let's keep going here. Again, value simplicity, reserve, lots of value, not a lot of work. I don't need to redeem it for international business class often. That's kind of me. I spend money every single day on average, right? Almost every day. And so getting a cash back on everything I spend is great. And so I don't mind having that. You know, with the other cards, you get flexible points. You build them up. You may not redeem them very fast because you have to build them up to get that redemption. And so you're not redeeming the points. You're not doing the earn and burn situation with points as much. Maybe you are. But I think cash back, the majority of people will earn and burn because there's no reason to pool your cash back if you can. By the way, fun thing you can do. I always play this game with myself. How long can you last without spending any money, right? And so this was a lot easier back when I was single. I think my record is 15 days where I did not spend anything. I went to the grocery store for like two weeks or something. I got two weeks worth of groceries. And I just like, like hammered all that and just did all, did nothing for like that two week period. And I 
had a really good month that month. Um, less easy now that I am married. Uh, but you know, I think so far my record has been recently around five days, which is pretty good. Doesn't always happen because then you have like sometimes these subscription services come in, they ping you with that that charge, and so that doesn't that kind of counts too. So, anyways, try it out. You'll be surprised how much money you can save if you kind of put your mind to it. Okay, so when we get to hotel cards, you know, because part of the question was about you could use co-brand on cards. The the nice thing about these cards, especially the ones in this picture, is that you just holding the cards enough, right? So you have the boundless, the business, the brilliant when it comes to the Bonvoy cards uh, that has the anniversary free on award. You have the Aspire card, which has that free on award. And you have the IHG business and uh, premier card that has that uh, free on award that comes anniversary as well. These cards also have statement credits too, but it's a necessary evil because if you just hold them and just use the statement credits, you can get positive value. That being said, you know, a lot of us have different stances on travel. Do you want to travel for free completely or do you want to pay for travel? So some people want to not spend any money on travel which or spend as less as possible, which is good. I don't mind paying for travel. I think the big thing is that I like to spend as little money as possible when I travel, right? And so if I can get some kind of free on award or some kind of like points redemption, that's really good. I would be able to do that. And you can you can do that with hotel credit cards, right? You don't need a flexible point currency to do this. You can just use a straight up hotel credit card, which with whatever hotel that you want to stay with, and that would work out just fine. 